Good afternoon to all the audience. The present study is called Recommendations for Implementation of Physical Training Guidelines for Patients Undergoing Chronic Hemodialysis. The authors are Paula Moscoso, who is talking right now, Hans Miller, Javier Troncoso, and Lucas Opas. Introduction. The exponential growth in the prevalence of chronic kidney disease is currently one of the greatest public health challenges worldwide. In countries with a low organ donation rate, hemodialysis is the renal replacement treatment per excellence. Although hemodialysis improves patient survival, it generates a series of consequences that gradually cause a significant reduction in general physical function, affecting daily activities and quality of life. The evidence of the beneficial effects of exercise in patients with any stage of CKD is well established. Different types of physical training programs were shown to improve the physical function of patients. In Latin American countries, these programs are still at a very incipient level of development. The present study is a review of recommendations that should be considered for the implementation of a physical training program for patients on chronic hemodialysis. General considerations for the implementation of an intradialysis exercise program. Sessions mainly consist of a combination of aerobic strength and or resistance and flexibility exercises, which should be adapted to the seated position of the hemodialysis users. However, this resting position can be considered as a facilitator or barrier for free movement and displacement, as you can see. The person in the right picture is more comfortable to perform exercises than the person in the left picture, so ergonomic issues are very important. Indications and contraindications. The generation of adverse events during, during the prescription of physical exercise in patients exposed to hemodialysis is very rare, as long as there is a risk categorization or stratification prior to entering the program. And security considerations. It is highly recommended the constant measurement of vital signs and the screening of symptoms and or signs such as pain, dyspnea, nausea, blurred vision, dizziness, fatigue, cramps, among others, in order to eventually interrupt the exercise and manage, manage them properly. Basic principles for the correct prescription of an intradialysis exercise program. The following principles should be included in the exercise prescription according to the objectives of both the multidisciplinary team and the user. First, we have the frequency. It refers to the number of days per week in which the exercise is carried out. In the case of hemodialysis patients, the recommended frequency is associated with the days of extracorporeal clearance, it means three days per week. Then we have intensity. It refers to the level or magnitude of effort that the individual must perform to carry out an activity or exercise. During aerobic exercise, it is essential to use an effort perception scale to guide the intensity of the exercise, since the heart rate can be directly influenced by the hemodynamic changes typical of hemodialysis and or the use of beta-blocking drugs. For this, we suggest the modified Borg scale, where patients should get no more than 5 or 6 points. Then we have time. It refers to the amount of physical exercise that the person must perform in a period of time. It is recommended that patients achieve 40 to 60 minutes of continuous exercise within the first two hours of hemodialysis. Then we have the type. It refers to the type of physical activity or exercise to be carried out. The combination of aerobic exercise, resist resistant exercise, and also respiratory exercise has shown significant improvements in maximal oxygen consumption, which is closely correlated with an improvement in cardiorespiratory fitness. Regarding the modality, as you can see in the pictures, the cycle ergometer adapted to the dialysis chair is the most used in aerobic exercise, while in resistant exercise, elastic bands and free weights are described, and in respiratory exercise, a threshold valve is used. Finally, at the end of each picture, you can see some examples of prescription of the different type of exercise. Conclusion. The implementation of an intradialysis exercise program requires the incorporation of physiotherapists in the renal health team. It is necessary to educate and disseminate the benefits that regular exercise entails, especially the improvement in the functionality, psychological state, and quality of life of dialysis patients. Considering the reported clinical benefits and improvement in quality of life associated with physical exercise in hemodialysis patients, it is imperative to promote its early incorporation as part of regular therapy in dialysis units across Latin America. Finally, these kind of programs open a new line of work in clinical research of wide projection for the benefit of patients with CKD. Here you can see some of our references. Thanks for your attention.